Welcome to another Community Conversation. I'm your host, Ian Parkinson, and I have with me today Chris Brown, who is the Manager and Head of Marketing and Community Engagement. Welcome, Chris. Thank you very much for having me, Ian. So exciting times at the Medicine Hat Public Library. Yeah, we've got a lot going on, uh, you know, coming out of uh, the summer break for some people, but we were pretty busy in the summer, and, and now that September's hit, we're even... Uh, getting busier with quite a few projects we have uh, right on the go right now. Any pro projects in particular you'd like to bring up? Uh, right now, the uh, really important thing we're doing is um, we have a uh, community needs assessment that's going on. It's, it's being led by our uh, Medicine Public Library Board. And uh, the general uh, crux of that is we're kind of out in the community, um, going to get to community events and talk to people and find out, you know, what's, um, what's needed in the community, uh, what suggestions people have, what they'd like to see in the library, and really ask all sorts of questions like, uh, in addition to, to what's needed and, and what we don't have, what are we doing well? What do we need to uh, continue to, to improve upon? What do we need to do more of? What would, uh, what would, how that would look for, for people in the community and, and see what, uh, what we can do from there. And uh, we have a survey uh, online, which is uh, the, probably the easiest way to, to kind of uh, have your voice heard in, in that fashion. Okay, so how would our viewers fill out the survey? The survey, um, the uh, we're going to have uh, board members, board trustees. They're going to be out at community events okay. um, that are happening, and kind of handing out. They'll be talking to people, just engaging directly with citizens, and let them know about that. They're going to have um, business cards uh, that are going to have a QR code that people can scan, and that'll take them right to the survey. Okay. Uh, that's going to be coming up uh, just in a little bit, I'd say in the next week or two. Uh, but the survey is already online, and the easiest way to get there uh, right now is to um, just go to our website. There was a, a blog post done about three months ago now just to announce that this was right. going to happen, and now we have a link to the survey in there, and you'll also be able to find it from, uh, from the homepage as well. I wish you well with it. Thank you. Now, I noticed in when I saw a brief description of the survey, there was something called a plan of service. Yeah, and what that is is um, this plan of service. The Alberta Library Act, Libraries Act uh, requires that uh, libraries complete a plan of service every, I think, three to five years or so, yeah. or at least every five years. So that's what uh, our current one is kind of coming to an end. I think it ran from 2021 to 2025. So this is going to be, be the next one. So that survey is going to really help inform and uh, show us a path forward uh, to getting to that plan of service then that is going to be needed. And that's going to outline what the library intends to do for, you know, the five years, I guess, from 2026 to, to 2030. Well, the library, I mean, in particular, our library here in Medicine Hat, I mean, it's evolved immensely over the last 20, 30 years from, you know, the dusty racks of books and dead silence to Really, I, I would more refer to it as a resource center. Yeah, I think that's true. And that's certainly something we, we, want, to, um, we want to have. We've been working towards it and want to continue and, and up our game uh, to, in that fashion. We, it is, like you say, it's not just books. We, yeah. People can now rent out um, DVDs, CDs, uh, video games. Um, uh, we have a, a library of things so people can rent out things like... Um, pickleball kits and uh, sewing kits sewing kits, and all those sorts of things. There's about, a, about 20 items on there that people can take out. Uh, and of course, it's all free with, um, with, with your driver card, which of course is free thanks to uh, some great community sponsors that we have. And I noticed too, you have um, obviously computers with the internet, so people can do research or look for work or apply to government services. But you also have a social worker. Yes, uh, the social worker um, uh, social worker position has probably been about uh, two and a half years old, I think, maybe coming up on three years. And uh, Crystal, our social worker, she does fantastic work. And she's told me recently she meets with people from like ages 18 to 84 and does everything from helping people, uh, you know, kind of navigate what you would... Um, typically think of as your, your social services sector yeah. to, to get through things like that, to also just helping uh, people figure out, you know, uh, the paperwork that needs to be done after after their their husband or, or husband or wife or, right. or significant other passes away, you know, that paperwork needs to go through the government and all those sorts of things, just to, to try to get them, you know, um, get that ball rolling that way and, and make things as easy, easy as possible for somebody who's, who's already going through a difficult time. 
And I think the library is a good place to do it because libraries have always been the place where you go for an answer. Exactly, yeah, the library is a repository of information and it's uh, just growing and evolving in this way with, um, with the position of the social worker and, and all the things that, uh, that that person can do to help out the members of our community. Good. You're also expanding your reach with Big Marble. Yes, we are. That um, kind of ties into our, the, uh, the community, community needs assessment and the plan of service. We're going to uh, put up a satellite library uh, near the end of September um, at the Big Marble Go Center. It's going to be a, a very, very simple, very minimal uh, situation to start with because it is very much a pilot project for us to do it this way. We've um, done pop-up libraries, um, I think it was every second Saturday for a while um, at the Big Marble Go Center. Uh, but this is going to be a permanent installation uh, for now, and it'll be the collections. It's going to be uh, some of it's going to be uh, grab and go for 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 one term to use it. People can just take these books and take them home, read them, bring them back, and continue that process. Uh, and then uh, there's also going to be some uh, some other uh, read it there items, uh, you know, uh, newspapers, magazines, that sort of stuff. So, I'm trying to get into the um, uh, the recreation center idea. We know that some people are up there. Uh, they have, you know, they take their kids for hockey practice or whatever, and, and parents need something to do, or they need something to entertain their their other youngsters for for that time. And and this is the sort of thing that uh, we hope is going to help out and and make things a little easier also for for people um, on the north side of town. I would imagine it'll take off like a cat. We're certainly hoping so. Yeah, it, it should should be. We're really excited about it, and it should be a really great thing to kind of expand our reach a little bit yeah. and, and just see what we can do here with this very small one and, and maybe look into something bigger bigger for the future. So what other projects do you have in mind or plan for the next year? Uh, one big thing that we do have coming up is, um, and this was just uh, approved last night by our board or in early September by our board, um, it was, um, the, uh, we're gonna put a bathroom in the Kinsman Children's Library. Ah. Currently, uh, the only bathroom that's upstairs on the upper level is, is right near the, the front entrance. Mm. And that's that can be, um, it's a bit of a concern for parents in yeah. some ways. Uh, sometimes when, when a little kid has to use the bathroom, they have to use it immediately and, and they just don't have time to, to scurry across, the, across yes. the lobby and out there. So this makes things a little easier that way. And just, you know, parents have had some concerns about um, what what kids might be uh, exposed to, I yeah. guess, in in those in that public uh, bathroom right by, right at the center or right at the entrance. So uh, this makes things easier in a few different a uh, few different ways for for parents, and you know, hopes hopefully brings a little uh, comfort to them and, and more confidence in in getting down there and and spending time at the library. We talked earlier too about a drop-in center. A drop-in. Oh, the uh, drop-in family day is that? Yes. Yes. Drop-in family day. Yes, we've. Uh, that started a year ago and took a break for the summer, but every Sunday is um, every Sunday that we're open is drop in family day. We have uh, lots of great things going on. Uh, there's children can build with children, families, not just not just children. Um, families can, you know, build with um, foam dinosaurs and uh, big blue blocks that they can make all sorts of uh, structures out of that. Uh, if they're, you know, you prefer more little things, we've got uh, Lego. People can build to their heart's content with the Lego that we supply for them. Uh, there's also a family-friendly movie in the theater uh, mm -hmm. that we run every every Sunday as part of Family Day. And of course, there's the uh, co-op community developmental play space that we have, and that's uh, open time then, and people can uh, can. Uh, play as much as they want and, and hang out in there and just have a great old time at the library on, on Sunday afternoons. It's always been a busy place. It's always been and, and you know we we want to make it as busy as possible and, and reach as many people as possible with uh, with the different programs we offer and this was just uh, one thing to give uh, people things to do, free things to do. We know that's a, that's a concern for, for yes. some people uh, and uh, we're just trying to, to help what we can and, and fill gaps uh, where we might see them and where the community says they are. And I, I've been involved in a project now for the last two years, and I found your staff to be not only very po pleasant and polite, but very knowledgeable. I've gone in there with the strangest questions, and usually the front counter. Mm. And then it's, oh, go down the stairs, talk to so-and-so, tell him this, mm -hmm. and Absolutely. Bingo. 
we have an incredible staff and, and if the you know first person that you that you talk to uh, can't help you directly they're absolutely going to uh, find the answer for you either right then like you say you'll, they'll direct you to the person they can or you know they'll they'll jot down some information from you and, and they'll get back to you yes. once they research it out it's it's and they have done absolutely that too. they have done that for, for you and for many of people and and you're not the only one that, yeah. that I know comes in there with uh, uh, a strange request or a uh, unique request let's say that may not have all the details but uh, the uh, librarians and the staff there will absolutely go out of their way to to help you find your answers. Excellent. So is there anything else you'd like to talk about that's going on at the library? We have uh, quite a few things. Uh, September is also is of course a, a busy month. We've got a creative writing workshop um, coming up. That is on September 17th with Jen Ferguson. She's an award-winning author and uh, you, that's going to be great. She um, writes novels, poetry, essays, so she can help anybody, any aspiring writers around here to uh, you know, give them some, some tips, some guidance, some point them in the right direction. That'll be a great resource. Another thing we're particularly excited about is there is a, um, uh, for the teens, there's a Japanese uh, festival that we have coming up at the end of the month on the 27th, I believe that is. And uh, it's kind of, anime nights have always been very popular with, right. with the teens. Um, so the, uh, this was described to me as, as anime night on steroids. It's gonna be all the favorites that you have from there, the, uh, the cosplay contest that they have, uh, ramen, ramen noodle eating contest, uh, but then they're also going to add in festival games to this one. So you know, go out and play um, super ball scooping and ring toss and things like that. And you know, you earn tokens uh, yeah. throughout these, throughout playing these games, and you get to uh, then uh, trade in or use these tokens in our in our vending machine for little you know stickers, keychains, lots of anime related prizes. Excellent. So there's also something, in, you're also doing something at Police Point Park. Yes, that is, uh, we've partnered with, um, it's a council of uh, indigenous mothers, fathers, grandmothers, and, and grandfathers. And what their mission, they're about a year old, and, and what their mission is, is to try to um, bridge gaps between uh, indigenous uh, people and non-indigenous people. So there's going to be um, uh, at Police Point Park on, um, the 27th as well, September 27th, from, from 9 a.m. To, to 3 p.m. There'll be things like um, uh, land acknowledgement uh, okay. teachings, uh, healing discussions. People that are there can uh, can experience some uh, traditional Blackfoot face painting, and it's uh, all going to be it's going to be uh, largely led by um, Kaine Elder Charlie Fox, who is okay. probably familiar to, to yes. people around here. He does great work, and, and we're excited to to have him down here um, for that thing. And then last on the list is, I've got here, Tic Tac. Tic Tac. Oh, Tic Tac is, the, that's the Japanese festival. Tic Tac is um, Teens Initiating Change Together and Committed is what Tic Tac stands for. So that's the group that's, um, like I said, uh, taken this uh, typical anime night and they've kind of blown it up, uh, blown it up for, for this month to, to make it uh, even bigger and bigger and better and, and hopefully get as many people as possible out there. And that's um, it being a, a teen thing, that is for teens in grades 7 to 12. Uh, up to and including age 19. So all the information on these different events is all on the public library site? Absolutely all on our on our website. Um, you can, uh, there's also our What's On uh, booklet that uh, covers everything for September to October right now. So that'll be in that, so you can keep up with that stuff. There's the website and we also have, you know, our, we have a newsletter, we have a blog um, yeah. that also can be found on our website and then uh, social media, of course, we have, um, Facebook and Instagram and TikTok accounts that you can uh, follow at MH Public Library. Really? Yep, and uh, and the teens also have one. If you're a teen and uh, you're watching this, uh, we have a teen-specific one. Um, that is MHPL Teens, so they have those uh, social media accounts as well. Well, is there anything else? Uh, I do just want to, uh, just to go back to the, the children's uh, library, I just want to shout out the city. That is a partnership between us and the city. The city has, uh, has lent their expertise um, to, for you know the development of, of that planning and, and the look of it, right. and they're re, they're leading the managing the project. Let's say uh, the library it's being paid for by the library, but they're managing that project, and it's it's a great thing that we um, we don't have that expertise obviously at the library, but but the folks at the city do to do this, so that's a great thing. And they're also uh, obviously with the big Marble Go Center, they're they're a partner in that, so we have a great partnership with the city that we cannot thank them enough for uh, 
for what they do for us. Yes, I, I would imagine putting a washroom in the children's section, you slowly but surely running out of space. In the in the children's section, uh, the children's section, uh, it is surprisingly big. We are we are definitely going to lose um, a couple of rows of shelves. Yeah. Um, maybe not lose, but they'll be moved anyway uh, to get around. And so there's there's some things going on there. But the children's library is a, uh, like I say, a surprisingly large space. And and uh, every, there's no going to be no changes to the library or to the children's library. Um, okay like no closers or anything yeah. while that work is going on it might be a little loud at times obviously but and we'll we'll deal with that as that comes up but it'll be business as usual in the children's library for for story time and story crafts and and just people that want to come visit and, and hang out with their with their children in the library and and find a new book well excellent i i wish you well with all of your projects thank you for coming in chris thank you very much for having me again thank you for watching